everything we've worked on so far has the same fixed set of cards we've had since the early days of this project, which is fine if you really like Jodie Whittaker, but less useful if you actually want to learn something new with this prog program. And so, to make this thing much more useful, we've got to let users add and delete cards from their stack, which means making a new view just for that purpose and presenting it as necessary. This will use lots of stuff you've learned earlier in this course, so it's really good practice. But I'll slip in a few new SwiftUI techniques to keep you learning. First, we need some state in content view to toggle whether the sheet with our edit cards view is showing or not. So we'll say up here, at state, private var showing edit screen is false. Next, we need to add a button that flips this boolean to true when it's tapped. So go ahead and find the code from earlier, our differentiate without color condition, this one here, and directly above it, we'll say there's a V stack with a H stack inside and a spacer in. And out of the H stack, another spacer. And we're doing that so that any code we place right here, i.e. our add button, we push into the top right corner or top trailing corner of the screen. So we'll say there's a button here, saying showing edit screen is true. With a label attached, we'll do image system name plus dot circle with the same modifiers we had elsewhere, which were a bit of padding, a background of dot black dot opacity 0.7 and a clip shape of circle like that. We'll give our whole V stack a foreground color of white with a font of large title and a little bit of padding so it doesn't go edge to edge on the screen. Let's press Command R so you can see how it looks. Hopefully, top trading corner, boom, there we go. This is our button right here. It won't do anything yet, just flipping a boolean behind the scenes, that's fine. We're gonna design a new edit cards view that lets users uh, add and, uh, cards to their system and it will load and save card data from user defaults. But before we do that, we're gonna make sure our uh, existing card struct conforms to codable, so it can be loaded and saved from JSON. So let's go ahead and add struct card colon codable so it works with reading and writing. Now, we're gonna make a new SwiftUI view called edit cards. So command N, SwiftUI view, edit cards. This thing has to do six different things. First, it needs its own array of cards to work with. Second, and have a navigation view wrapped around it with a done button to dismiss the view. Third, and have a list showing all existing cards the user added previously. Fourth, add a swipe to delete for those cards. They can use a get rid of old cards at once anymore. Fifth, have a section at the top to add new cards, prompt an answer. And then sixth, have method to load and save data from user defaults. All of those things are things we've covered previously. I recommend if you want to, Really push yourself, pause the video, see how much you can do from memory. And if you get it wrong, it's okay. If you forget, it's okay. It's better than okay. When you forget, you relearn. When you relearn, it goes in deeper and deeper and deeper until it becomes like the back of your hand. Pause the video, give it a try with those six things, like rewind and check them again if you want to, uh, and see how you get on. I'll be here in a moment. Okay, still here? Let's solve it. And we've looked at this previously, so I'm not gonna explain it very much here. It's old, old code. So we'll say first that we have a new environment property, environment uh, for the uh, dismiss action, like that, var dismiss. Then at state private var cards to hold our current card array. Then at state private var new prompt be an empty string. And at state private var New answer, be an empty string. Then our body, I'll say that is a uh, navigation view with a list inside. And the first section will be to add a new card. So I'll say here, the text field with a prompt of prompt, text bound to dollar new prompt. Another one uh, with a prompt of answer, text bound to dollar new answer, new answer. Then a button called add card with an action calling a method we haven't written yet. That's okay. It's called add card. Swift will complain. Don't worry about it. We're gonna add a bunch of these stubs in a second. 
Then we'll say again, second section, this time it's the old card. So we'll loop over all our cards array and show each one in its own row. This thing does not conform to identifiable. So we can't loop over the cards array directly. We instead use array indices, and that's fine. We'll say uh, for each zero to cards.count with the ID of backslash.self index in a V stack with alignment of dot leading. And we'll do a text with a cards.index dot prompt in a font of dot headline. Then a text with cards index dot answer with a font, uh, sorry, foreground color, sorry, foreground color of secondary, like that. Now we want to make sure the user can swipe to delete in the for each. So we'll say do an on delete with perform remove cards. I'll add a title to our list, nav title of edit cards. Add a toolbar down here dot toolbar with a button saying done, calling in another method not written yet called done. I need a list style here, custom one of dot grouped. I think it looks better. And on a peer, perform another unwritten method, load data. Whew. Okay, let's start filling in all the blank methods you haven't written yet. Starting with the easiest one, done. This is called dismiss. That's one down. Then we have load data. That's the same code written before. We'll attempt to read data by using user defaults dot standard dot data for a key called cards. If that works, we'll do let decoded be try JSON decoding uh, an array of come on Hudson decode an array of card dot self from data and then cards equal decoded. When it comes to saving, we'll do something very similar. We'll attempt to encode. So if let data equals try JSON encoder dot encode our cards then user defaults dot standard dot set that data for the key cards. Next up is this uh, button to add a card. So we'll just call down here uh, func add card. This will trim out the text that entered and make sure it exists with any text in there at all. So we'll say uh, let trimmed prompt equals new prompt dot trimming characters in dot white spaces and let trimmed answer be new answer dot trimming characters in dot white spaces and then guard that trimmed prompt dot uh, is empty is false so it has characters in there that aren't just white space and trimmed answer dot is empty is false false else bail out do not add the card if we're still here make a new card using the card with the prompt of trimmed prompt and answer of trimmed answer. Insert that at the start of the array. So insert card index zero, so you can see at the top. It's like I had with the word game much, much earlier in the course. And then call save data. And finally, swipe to delete is func remove cards at offsets and index set. We'll do cards dot remove remove at offsets, those offsets, and save data. Whew. Super fast, very little explanation. We've covered it all previously. It's all old stuff, it's just practice for you, which is no problem. Practice helps things sink in. And if you forget, don't worry about it. Relearning helps it go in deeper. Never worry about forgetting stuff. Forgetting is a superpower. Relearning is a great, great thing. Anyway, that's almost all of edit cards completed, but, before we can use it, we've got to go back to content view so we can actually show the sheet on demand uh, and then call reset cards when it's dismissed. Now we've used sheets previously, but there's one extra technique I want to show you here, which is that you can attach a function to your sheet that will be called automatically when the sheet is dismissed. This is not helpful for times when you want to send data back from the sheet. Here's the new thing, what do you want to do with it? Does not work here. But in this instance, we're just gonna call reset cards. There's nothing coming back, it's fine. So, we're gonna to add to the end of our content view Z stack alongside 
uh, on receive and on change, we'll say uh, there's a sheet. Is presented is showing edit screen. And then on dismiss, when I dismiss the sheet, call reset cards automatically. And what's in the sheet? Our edit cards view. And that code works. We could use that. But now they're getting more experience in SwiftUI, I want to show you an alternative way to get the same result. When we use this sheet modifier, we've got to give SwiftUI a function it can run that returns a view to show inside the sheet. For us, that is this closure right here. Call this closure and it return the contents of the sheet. It's calling edit cards. So it creates an edit cards, sends it back. It's basically doing return edit cards. That's what it's doing. Send one back to be used in our layout. When we write edit cards like this, we're relying on a thing called syntactic sugar. Syntactic sugar. We're treating this struct, this view, as a function. Because Swift UI, or sorry, Swift, silently treats that as a call to the struct's initializer. So in practice, what we're actually writing is edit cards dot init. We're calling that just in a shorter way, in a sweeter syntactic sugar way. And this matters because rather than making this closure that calls another function, we can actually just pass in the edit cards initializer straight to the sheet. We can delete that and say the content of our sheet will come from calling edit cards dot init like that. And that means when you want to read the content of the sheet, go ahead and call the edit card initializer. It'll send you back the view to use. That's what initializer does. It creates the view and sends it back to be used. So we're passing in right here. Now this approach only works because the edit card initializer has no values being passed in. You can see it has default values for new answer, new prompt and the cards array, and that comes to the environment. If it had an initializer that took custom values, like things it loaded elsewhere, for example, then you couldn't just pass it in here. This thing must be a function that takes no parameters and returns the finished view. But everything else, like passing in custom data, create your closure and do it inside there. Anyway, as well as calling reset cards when we dismiss the sheet, we also want to call it when our view first appears. So we'll add this below the sheet, on appear, perform reset cards. So when the view is first shown, reset cards. And when it's shown after it's missing the sheet, reset cards. No matter what, reset cards. And this means we can ditch our, all those example cards we had and instead load them. So we can say, first things first, our uh, cards array is no longer stacked with example cards up here. It's going to be just an empty array of cards. Don't just force in examples instead. And now we can say uh, this thing should load its data from user default, just like edit cards did. So I'll go to edit cards. I'll grab this uh, load data method here to my clipboard and head back to content view and just paste it on in here. Let's do it right here. So load my cards from user defaults. And finally, we can call this thing from inside reset cards. So we refill our cards from user defaults when the app launches or whenever the user edits their cards. So right now we make an example card array here, remove that and instead just say load data. And with that done, Hopefully, you can see some cards I saved earlier. Let's find out. There we go. A real test for you. What is the capital city of Wales? It's not Aberystwyth. It is Cardiff. And that works because we can now go to the add screen over here, add custom cards. We can say here, uh, what is the capital of Scotland? I told you that early on in the course. It is Edinburgh. Then press add card and press done. And we'll now see two cards here. It's loaded both of them quite nicely, which is really, really nice. So at this point we have 
custom loading and saving working, timer, haptics, and much, much more. This app is now complete. Good job.